G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. Mojang wants to improve minecarts, which I think is a great idea. However, there is a significant issue with the current implementation. Ah, oh, you stinky car. Needless to say, the minecarts definitely need a lot more critical thinking before they can be implemented. We already have a decent analysis of the new minecart behaviors by Inspector Talon and an analysis of the redstone changes by the Crafty Masterman. But what really interests me is the fact that Mojang wants to change minecarts from being slow and precise to having a higher speed cap making them faster and more flexible. Because it turns out that making minecarts move faster on rails is actually a pretty complicated problem. In any physics engine, motion is defined by distance divided by time. Distance is easy in Minecraft because the world is subdivided into cubic meter volumes. Our unit for distance is simply meters. However, time is not so simple. Because while time in the real world is continuous and can be infinitely subdivided, time in Minecraft is discrete and limited to a 50 millisecond interval which the game loop runs on. With these definitions of distance and time in our block game, we can define two different classes of object. Blocks are discrete in both space and time, being fixed to Minecraft's cubic meter grid. However, entities are continuous in space, being able to take on any position in Minecraft's coordinate system. This is because it'll be very strange to have a creeper moving towards you like this. But even though entities are continuous in space, they are not continuous in time. For example, let's consider this hopper minecart which every tick will try to pull items from containers directly above it. If we have a look in the hopper cart's inventory, we can see it pick up the items and transport them somewhere else. At the default minecart speed before the experimental features of 8 meters per second, our minecart is moving at a speed of 0.4 meters per game tick, which means every single tick the minecart is moving 0.4 meters, which is less than a full block, that the minecart is reliably pulling items from every single one of these barrels. If I bump up the max minecart speed to 20 meters per second, the minecart is now able to move one block every single tick. So if I freeze the game, like so, and look inside the minecart's inventory, every time I step, the minecart will pick up exactly one item from a different barrel because each tick the minecart is moving exactly one block to the next barrel and picking up the item. But notice what happens when it increases speed even further than 20 meters per second. Now the minecart is moving more than a block every single tick. So if I slow down tick rate like so and then we look inside the inventory of the minecart. Every now and then, the minecart will actually skip our barrels and fail to pull out items. You might be wondering, but cubic meter, it looks like the minecart is moving continuously beneath the barrels. Well, this is an illusion caused by client entity interpolation. This is because while the game runs on 20 ticks per second, the client renders the game at frame rates much higher than this. And so the client has to interpolate the motion of fast moving entities to make their motion look more continuous. This means if I use a mod to disable this interpolation, what we observe is the true position of the entity every single game tick. So the game is essentially lying to you about where an entity is in any given frame in order to create the illusion of continuous motion. This discrete motion is what causes problems with minecarts traveling at over 20 meters per second. Because for the longest time, the speed limit of minecarts being limited to eight meters per second makes the minecarts at least reliable enough to use in big complicated contraptions like this universal smart crafter. Apart from the issues with the experimental changes that causes minecarts to leak everywhere, which I honestly believe will be fixed at some point, minecarts simply being able to move faster on rails 
is the greatest way to diminish their capability in redstone contraptions. With this in mind, I have devised the perfect way to frame the conflict of interest between the average player wanting minecarts that can do cool tricks, and technical players wanting to use minecarts as redstone components. Minecarts were originally envisioned as a transportation method that would inherit the dogmatic themes of the game, but bugs and problems with the minecarts implementation forced developers to limit its speed to a measly 8 blocks per second. This made minecarts extremely boring and uninteresting as a mode of transportation, but then technical players came along and innovated on these limitations, where the speed limit actually works in our favour by preventing the minecarts from skipping blocks containing redstone components. The way I see it, minecarts prior to the experimental changes are like robotic workhorses that move with purpose around machinery, and what Mojang wants is a minecart that behaves more like a vehicle that the player can ride around on and do cool stunts. But the problem is, these modes of operation are mutually exclusive, unless we implement more features. That's right, what if we had a new variant of powered rail that you craft using copper instead of gold? This new rail variant would artificially impose a speed limit on the minecarts to restore what was possible with previous behaviours. And in the same way redstone wire has 0 to 15 block states for signal strength, the copper rail could have 0 to 15 block states for speed settings. So then, signal strength could be used to define the speed setting. Or we can have oxidized rail variants, which get slower as the quality of rail degrades. By adding a rail that enables the player to restrict the motion of a minecart, people can use these rails to make sure their minecarts don't skip past redstone components. But then the question is, what do we do with the gold powered rail? Well, why not just remove the speed limit entirely? This might be a bit of a hot take, however apart from the game rule, Minecrafts already have a speed limit, which is defined by their simulated aerodynamic drag. Wait a second, aerodynamics? Drag? This sounds like a job for a mechanical engineer. Minecraft simulates drag using a very simple formula. For each game tick, the entity's new velocity is calculated using the previous game tick's velocity, plus gravity, and multiply by a drag coefficient. However, with minecarts moving horizontally on rails, we don't worry about gravity. Instead, the formula for minecarts uses a force applied by the rail, and it turns out minecarts are quite complicated as there are many different drag coefficients for different configurations of minecart. By applying the formula for minecarts, we can determine the maximum speed for any minecart is about 400 meters per second. This is a terminal velocity, when the force of drag incurred by an object moving through the air cancels out the force of propulsion, resulting in no net increase in velocity. If you crank the max minecart speed, it feels like the minecart just accelerates forever and the speed it gets to is ludicrous. This just feels like really janky and broken behaviour, which is why people feel compelled to put speed limits on minecarts in the first place. However, Aerodynamic drag can provide a much better solution to fix this behaviour. If you are familiar with aerodynamics, you will know that the drag force is dependent on the square of velocity. But Minecraft's drag equation has a linear dependence on velocity. This is why the unrestricted acceleration of minecarts feels so unnatural. Because Minecraft is using the wrong equation to calculate drag. A more accurate equation will look something like this. We apply the drag coefficient same as before, but now we subtract a portion of the velocity with drag depending on the new velocity squared. The formula can then be improved by using the reciprocal dvs and defining a new variable vi to store the new velocity with propulsion. Then apply that variable to the linear and quadratic elements separately, and we have a model for a quadratic drag. To explain what I mean by linear and quadratic, let's use a simple tool like Desmos to make some graphs. If I type in the relation y equals x, we obtain a linear relationship between the variables y and x. Notice how this produces a response that looks like a straight line. A quadratic relationship looks more 
like this. Now the variable y depends on the square of x, and it's important to note that the relationship becomes more aggressive as x becomes larger. Implementing the quadratic formula for minecarts, we would see the velocity peak much faster at a much more reasonable value of around 88 meters per second. Handling drag for minecarts this way eliminates the need for a speed cap and has the added bonus of simulating realistic aerodynamics. But how realistic? Well, I decided to go on a learning adventure to find out exactly that. That's right, I used computational fluid dynamics to model the aerodynamics of a minecart. I made a geometrically accurate model of the minecart, stuck it in a box with a 20 m per second airflow, and computed the drag coefficient to be 1.292. This places a minecart somewhere between a passenger train and a hollow semisphere. We can also look at results like the contours of static pressure, where we can clearly see the minecart ramming through the air, the contours of turbulent kinetic energy, which shows where we're wasting a lot of energy with air being pushed around the body of the minecart. In particular, we've got lots of vortices occurring due to the internal cavity at the top of the minecart. We've also got the contours of velocity magnitude showing the boundary conditions at the surface of the minecart where the velocity has to stop, and the air having to accelerate to get around the body of the minecart. And finally, my personal favourite, path line contours which shows the air flows moving around the minecart. Here we can clearly see the leading face of the minecart, and the airflow is being pushed to the side as the minecart drives through the air. We've also got a small air gap below the minecart where the air is rapidly accelerating to squeeze through the tiny space. We can also switch viewing planes to see the airflow flowing to the sides of the minecart. If I remove the body of the minecart, we can see how the internal cavity creates lots of vortices which wastes a lot of energy, as well as the trailing edge of the minecart producing even more vortices. This causes minecarts to have very poor aerodynamic performance. But how would our CFD minecart compare to the proposed simulated aerodynamics for Minecraft? Well, it turns out a minecart made of pure iron would have a mass of about 3.4 tons. A powered rail accelerates minecarts to 1.2 meters per second squared. This means powered rails deliver a force of about 4,000 newtons and can deliver this force continuously every meter, giving them a power output of about 4 kilowatts. This gives powered rails the power output of a small motor in the torque range of a Lightning GT, which means minecarts are actually quite realistic to real world vehicles. And what is even more surprising is that when we calculate the terminal velocity by combining the force delivered by powered rails with our simulated drag coefficient, we find that the maximum speed a powered rail could realistically accelerate a minecart is about 75 meters per second, or 270 kilometers per hour. That is right in the ballpark for the speed cap we defined if Minecraft simulated realistic aerodynamics. I should probably point out that this supposed realism is only really valid for minecarts moving in a straight line. The moment the minecart hits a curved rail, your expectations are a bit... confused. This is because a minecart on a curved rail traveling at 75 meters per second would generate about 40 million newtons of force. That is about 40 times the acceleration on the surface of the sun. With this in mind, I think that minecarts should have an unlimited speed only limited by drag when traveling in a straight line, and simply derail if they travel too quickly around corners. This would enable players to build vast rail networks for traveling quickly at high speeds, while it's also maintaining the player's expectations when the minecarts turn a corner. This would mean players would have to carefully manage the speed of minecarts as they change directions, which could easily be facilitated with the new copper rail variant. And to make minecarts more fun and exciting to use, give them more sound effects when they come to a screeching hole and make them shoot particles everywhere. Make the sound that a minecart makes more dynamic as its speed increases. And heck, if the speed limit of the minecart is only defined by the force delivered to the minecart, why not even go as far as to add a new minecart variant that you feed rockets to obtain accelerations even faster than what powered rails can deliver? Because if Mojang wants to improve minecarts, they have to improve players' expectations of minecarts, which means doing more than simply increasing the volume of the noise a minecart makes as it speeds up, making them fun, immersive, 
and obedient to the player's expectations. This is just an over-the-top analysis of the physics in a simple little block game, and given Mojang's response to our feedback, they might not be so eager to make such dramatic changes as I am suggesting, but either way, it was a lot of fun doing a deep dive into the dynamics of Minecraft's physics engine. And would you look at that, a new snapshot was dropped. I wonder... Huh, let's try a simple recipe, and hopefully... Ah, yeah, looks like it's still got some work to do. Yep, something's definitely still broken. Oh well, at least these changes are only experimental for the time being. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.